All right, so I've not. Hey, do not bark at those goats. Hey. All right, so I've not reviewed anything in quite a while. Haven't made one of these videos in quite a bit. But uh, long story short, for people who were not regular viewers, I'm a hay farmer. I lease a bunch of different properties and grow hay on them. And this year, I got a number of larger properties that I'm working on, which is really nice because it saves me from having to drive out to them pretty much every single day. You know, I can leave my equipment there and come and go. But one downside to this is I don't really have a convenient way to air up tires as they start to go down, especially on equipment out there. And uh, I got to thinking about it. I was like, I would really like the idea of just having a small 12 volt air compressor that would live in the toolbox on my truck so that way if i'm ever out hauling stuff and the trailer tire starts to lose air i can blow it up uh you know you know it's just it could come in really handy and i got to thinking about this and i looked around online and there's actually a lot of really good options for people uh, who want a 12 volt air compressor, most of which originate in or primarily serve the off-roading community. People with Jeeps and the like with those giant mud tires, they like to drive wherever they're gonna be off-roading. Then they let a lot of the air out of the tires so the pressure is lower and they perform better off-road. And then they use all sorts of different air compressors to air them back up. And they seem to say that two of these things hold up really well. That is the one that I bought and also a small Puma compressor, which I looked at, but I ultimately chose this one because it will be easier to fit in the toolbox on my truck. And uh, yeah, we're gonna try this thing out. So this is the Via Air P, I think it's a P400. I set this up and took it out of the packaging and everything, but I've never actually used it. And essentially all that this is, is this nice looking little air compressor. This looks like a design that's out of the 1950s or whatever. Obviously it's new production, but yeah, this is the 400P. They have a bunch of different models and it powers itself off these jumper cable looking things, which you just hook to the battery in your truck, or we're gonna demonstrate this off a tractor because that's what's parked over here, but whatever. Pretty much anything with a 12 volt battery. And this is a standard, I believe a standard quarter inch NPT quick connect so you can put any air hose on this you like. The one that they include is this nice coil looking design. You can see this is the same coupler that you have on the air compressor in your shop most likely. And it just goes on like that. And then at the other end, you got this uh, pressure gauge and this thing which you can set up like five different ways. Cause it like, uh, yeah. Intermittent deflation, continuous deflation, intermittent, oh wait, it says the same. Really? I don't know, okay, well, whatever the case, you can do a bunch of stuff with this. You can deflate tires with it and also inflate them. And uh, yeah, like I said, I've never actually used this thing, so we're gonna try it out. So this is a brand new tire this year on my Case 931 that I ran over some thorns with when I was doing tillage work earlier in the year with it. Now evidently with this thing, you're just only supposed to use it with the engine running because it takes a lot of power. It takes like, uh, I think 40 amps. There's a 40 amp fuse in this thing. And uh, I guess it's better for the battery and it helps it charge up faster. Re it helps the battery recharge faster if the engine's running. So I mean, I don't know how any of this stuff works. That's just what I've been told. We're gonna try it out here. Ah, perfect. How about that? Yep, it's making air. Huh, <laughs> man, that's pretty cool. Uh, I think it's set to inflate right now. I, I, don't, I don't really know how this thing works. How hard can it be, famous last words? It's pumping it up. Now one downside to these things is that they are extremely slow. This one is rated at I think 2.3 CFM, something like that. So that's like almost nothing. This is going to take a while. However, it's designed for portability, not for fueling or charging things up quickly. And uh, if you want to run air tools with this, there really is no good way to unless you use it to fill up a portable air tank like that little uh it's about the size of a five gallon bucket tank that i take around to air up tires on stuff like this hey look it's already working you can see noticeably this is starting to come up now unless you've got something like that there's really no feasible way to use this with air tools 
Um, but, you know, like I said, I bought this thing to use it in the field like this or under quote unquote emergency circumstances when you really have to air up a tire and something. And uh, for the amount of money it was, look, this is actually coming up a lot faster than I expected it to. For the amount of money that it was, you get this design that's supposed to be a pretty proven design. Nice metal construction, it's not made out of plastic or whatever. It sounds good, it sounds really smooth. I guess time will tell ultimately, but uh, it's pretty cheap insurance to keep this in a toolbox or something. Well, look, this is coming up really quick. It's already almost 30 PSI, I want 45 in this. Man, it's a pain keeping air in a bunch of farm tires for everything. I've got, I need to hire someone who just does tire work and have them come out here for like a full day. I got like eight things that need to be done. I need a new tube put in, a rear tractor tire, need another rear tractor tire changed. This thing needs to be patched. And I need uh, six tires dismounted off the rims so I can uh, get rid of the rims and recycle the tires. That's gonna be a lot of work. Lucky move. All right. Yep, still just over 30 PSI. All right, we buddy, what do you think of this? So for those wondering, this is, I think it's like an 11L15 tire or something. It's a pretty good sized tire. There's, I think a little less volume in this than there is in a regular, you know, pickup tire or whatever, but still a 15 inch tire and it's, it's coming up the pressure pretty quick now. All things considered, I mean, it's a heck of a lot faster than running home and charging up the little portable air tank or dragging out an air compressor, that's for sure. Isn't it, pup? Just over 45 PSI. I like it. This is gonna be fun. What size wheel is this? I think it's a 36. It's a 28. 28 inch rim. And the tire on it's flat. Ish, getting there. We're gonna air it up. This might take a while. You know, I never thought about just how good things are with the automotive industry until I started messing around with farm equipment. This is a little off topic, but it's still one of my rants. If you want to buy a car, you can go to any car dealership in any major city for any brand and buy the cheapest, crappiest thing on their lot that's brand new, and you have a very reasonable expectation that that machine will function for well over 100,000 miles with basically nothing going wrong with it other than, you know, having to do some oil changes and some common maintenance stuff. But pretty much nothing bad happens to it. Farm equipment, farm tractors, I challenge anyone to find a piece of farm machinery that was built in the last 10, 15 years that's made it to three to 5,000 hours without some type of catastrophic failure or major breakdown or multiple warranty services for defects from the factory. The quality has plummeted in the last 10, 15 years. And a lot of the innovation that people take for granted in the automotive world simply never reached us in the first place. It's kind of a pain. You know, even, not so much with farm equipment, but even just like with utility trailers and stuff, you go buy a trailer and none of the lights work after three years. You go buy a 25 year old car off of Craigslist for $600 or whatever, and all the electronic stuff still works in it. Uh, well, whatever, I'm glad I have this air compressor. I wonder how much pressure I'm supposed to put in this tire. I've been watching it just in my rant. It's gone up quite a bit. Now, that's another thing I wanna talk about with this. This little compressor will go up to, I wanna say 130 PSI. 150 PSI. This thing will do 150 PSI. So if you have trailer tires, like what's on my big gooseneck over there, those things take, I think, 105 PSI in them. And on that dump truck, those tires are basically semi-tires. They're 11 R22 and a half. Those things take, I think, 110 PSI. And this thing will do it. This will produce 150 PSI. I'm sure it'll take quite a while, but if you're on the side of the road, you know, if you stop for lunch when you're hauling something and you notice one of your trailer tires is looking a little low and it needs to get back up to 105 or 110 PSI, you can do it with this little thing. It's cheap insurance, you know? That whole pack is like the size of a large lunchbox or maybe a small backpack. 
I got it just hoping I can keep this in my truck and uh, pull it out when there's situations like this that are oh shoot that's already 30 psi all right well that was fast okay yeah oh that worked really well actually Thank you.